Jeremiah had predicted that the Babylonian captivity would last 70 years, and that time was drawing to a close. And that would mean that Daniel himself is now an old man, because he was among the people captured when the temple was sacked. So here's what it says beginning right at the top of Daniel chapter 9. In the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, of the lineage of the Medes, who was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books the number of the years specified by the word of the Lord through Jeremiah the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. Now, you see that word desolations? A lot of modern books about prophecy like to suggest that the, quote, abomination of desolation represents the work of some kind of latter-day dictator who openly opposes the Christian faith. And that understanding is partly understandable, because the Bible kind of uses it in that sense when it uses the destruction of the temple as an illustration for what the church would go through in the future. But in its primary sense, the abomination of desolation is talking about the wickedness of human kings. At the very end of 2 Chronicles, it lists a number of very wicked people who committed what the Bible calls abominations. And it says that led directly to the Babylonians sacking the temple and leaving it desolate. In other words, it's not the sins of an outsider that this term is addressing. It's the sins of God's own people, which becomes obvious when you read the lament of Jesus over the city of Jerusalem. He's broken-hearted because his people had once again strayed from the purpose of the faith. And so now he tells them that the once again their house was going to be left desolate. Then looking ahead to the dark moment when the Romans would begin their military crackdown, Jesus says this, Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Read it really carefully and you'll see. Jesus is tying the future destruction of the temple to the prophecies of Daniel, which takes us again back to Daniel chapter 9. There's a brief prophetic passage at the end of this chapter that some people call the 70-week prophecy. 